Hey everyone, in this video I will be making my first Marine Corps shadow box. A friend of mine, Bob, saw my site and wanted to have one made for his father's birthday. Now his father is a Vietnam vet, so this one will be special. He looked around and saw one with a jacket in it and asked if I could replicate it. You know me, I love a challenge. Now this might not be the way the pros do it, but it certainly worked for me, so let's get started. If you have seen any of my other shadow boxes, you know I hate big and bulky. So the first thing I needed to do was find the smallest jacket possible. Remember, this is for display purposes, so you really don't need to use a jacket that you actually wore. I found a size 33 small, which I believe is the smallest that is made. Lay out your jacket on a flat surface and fold it in half. Measure your jacket from top to bottom and add an inch to both the top and the bottom. This will be the height of your box. Don't build a box and then think you can just make the jacket fit in it. Although the jacket will be the centerpiece, I was also given a knife to incorporate into the box. So right now, I am unsure where I will place it in the box. So my lateral measurements will include enough space right now for however I intend to position the knife. As always, be sure your miter saw is square before making any cuts. I intend to go with a red background to make the dark jacket pop. So for this project, I will use oak because it is a lighter wood and it won't detract from the interior of the box. I cut my first piece and then use it to cut my second. This will ensure my top and bottom are the same size. Now repeat this process for the side pieces. At this point, if you have a speed square, you can align your miter saw and make these cuts. The cuts will be 45 degrees, but you can't always guarantee the exact length like you can with a framing jig. If you have not made yours yet, there will be a link at the end of this video. So with my framing jig, I make my cuts. This way I get the tightest fit that I possibly can. Now that all your pieces are cut, let's go to the router and make your pieces fancy. Now if you don't have a router, there are other options. You can make a double groove cut, and to show you this, I will do it on the Ensign crossbar later. But for this box, I will use my favorite bit, a 3 8 inch roundover. Going back to your table saw, raise your blade up to a quarter of an inch. We're going to now make our glass grooves. They should be a quarter of an inch deep and a quarter of an inch down from the top, so set your fence accordingly. So you don't make any mistakes when cutting your groove, align all your pieces in the same orientation so you don't have to think about it once you begin cutting. Now you need to cut your backplate relief. Swap out your blade for a dado blade, and then with the backplate you intend to use, set your blade height. Now before I make my final cut, I grab a scrap piece and make a test cut to see if my fit works. At this point, I'm ready to join my top and two sides. Remember to leave your bottom unattached. For starters, I will put a little wood glue on the corner and then squeeze them together with a clamp. I will use a square to ensure my corners are a perfect 90 degrees. Eventually, I will place a few staples in them, but you don't want them to move during this process, so wait until the glue sets. While you're waiting for that to dry, you can take a measurement from relief cut to relief cut and then cut out your back plate. You can place your bottom piece in position long enough to get a proper measurement. This way you can continue cutting the complete dimensions of your back plate. From my instant crossbar, I grabbed a scrap piece. Now it has two old nail holes on one of the sides, but one I can cut off the top and the other I can hide below the display board. Make a mark right below the glass groove. Ensure your back plate is in position when you do this. Now let's glue in your crossbar. You might have noticed that I did not take any measurements for the ensign crossbar length. If you have a flag, the length of the ensign crossbar would match the bottom length of the folded flag. For this box, I was not given a flag. I will use a prop flag for this display. Trust me, no one will know the difference. First, set your crossbar and then with a speed square, Ensure your crossbar is at 45 degrees. 
Take a pencil and trace the inside perimeter of the frame onto the back plate. Then remove. Lay it across the top of your box and now we can prepare the foam board. I prefer a display board at least a half an inch thick. And since I'm cheap, I buy two quarter inch foam boards from Everything's a Dollar and glue them together. Yes, this only saves me a few bucks, but it saves me a lot more when you buy in bulk. I simply use wood glue and glue the two thinner pieces together to achieve my half inch. Take your foam board and lay it across the back plate. Now the lines you just drew earlier before you removed your back plate, you will be using to align your foam board. Line it up, draw your lines, and then make your cuts. Here I get to say my catchphrase from all my videos. Hey, I make this up as I go along, I really do. But here I realize that my foam board is not wide enough to fit the back plate. To overcome this, I simply cut a piece and glue it into place. Once everything is cut and in position, put your box back together. Ensure you have at least an eighth of an inch gap all the way around between your box and your foam board. This will be your felt buffer. Then, when it looks good, take some wood glue and glue it into position. Remember, you are just placing the bottom of the box in position during this process. It should not yet be attached. If you did attach the bottom piece already, your box will not have any glass in it, and someone will steal your knife. Earlier, I told you we were not given a flag for this box. Well, there are many ways around this. First, take the corner piece of your foam board and cut it to fit the ensign display area. This time you will want it very snug. This will be a lot different if you are actually placing a real flag in this section. If you are, you need to refer to some of my other videos that show the installation of a real flag in detail. Before we finish the flag, let's start on the knife. Now originally Bob saw my spur shadow box with the big knife, so he knew he definitely wanted a knife in his shadow box, but he said he would leave the mounting of the knife up to me. Originally I planned on just repeating the process that I used with the Calvary spur shadow box, but again I make this up as I go along and I thought I would try something new. When I place a cutlass through a shadow box I usually raise the backdrop so it is closer to the blade. This raised area of the foam board always looks nice, so this time I thought I could do the opposite and raise the backboard but depress the knife into the foam board so it would look flat. I originally thought that this would be a good idea because then I can depress it low enough just to be under the glass and the glass would actually help hold it in place and I wouldn't need any kind of brackets. Here's what I did. Add an inch to either side of the knife using the cuff of the knife. Then cut two pieces and ensure they will make it all the way across the box under the ends and crossbar. Eventually, I would cut a third piece after seeing how much space was between the knife and the glass. Three worked perfect, and I probably could not have pulled this off if I was using the half-inch foam board that I usually recommend. Then, lay down your knife on the cut pieces and center your knife. Then trace out the knife onto the foam board. Once traced out, cut out your lines. The top piece needs to be pretty accurate, but the lower piece does not. So if you are not good with a knife, cut both pieces as accurate as possible, and then pick the best of your two as your top piece. After your pieces are cut, then go ahead and glue them together, with your top piece being the most accurate one. With the two drying now, you can see if you need to add an extra piece. If you do, cut the bottom piece as generic as you want. Then check your fit and trim away any excess that will allow your knife to sink all the way down into the foam board. So to compensate for the missing flag, I have some star spangled material that I can use in place of a real flag. Go back and take the corner piece of foam board you cut to fit into your ensign display area and lay it on your material. For me, star alignment is always most important. So here, take extra time to ensure you align the top and center star perfectly in the top of the triangle. Then tape into position. Your flag should now have a nice flush and snug fit. Going back to the knife, take your foam riser and place it under the frame of your shadow box. You can use a pencil, but here I just make marks with the X-Acto knife in my hand. Then, from your top markers, 
draw a line that will ensure your width is even across the cut. Before doing this, break off a blade to ensure you have a sharp new blade. This will keep your top corners of foam board very sharp. The application of felt to the foam riser is the same as in all my videos. I don't need to go into much detail, but use Elmer's glue to apply your felt on the face. And you can use duct tape on the back for support. And yes, I have a color assortment of duct tape that I keep on the shelf. Once your felt is on, you can cut a slit in the area of the knife depression. You are not removing any felt here, just cut a line so the remainder of the felt will fold over into the inside of the depression. Then take your knife and press it into position. At this point, all should look great with your knife. Place your riser with the knife back into position within the shadow box. And with a scrap piece of glass or whatever will fit in the glass groove of the box, it doesn't have to be the glass, slide it into the groove and ensure that there is enough contact on the knife to push down and hold it into position. You can actually place some wood glue under the knife for extra support if there is a gap between your knife and the glass. That will work just fine. The application of the felt to the face plate of the foam board is exactly the same in all my videos. Cut your felt to fit, make sure your hands are clean, and smooth it onto the board. One thing you might need to do is, if your felt has some really bad creases in it, you can iron it prior to application to ensure a nice smooth application. And yes, this is the part where I involve my wife, because after 28 years of ironing uniforms, I simply refuse to pick up an iron. I did place a piece of duct tape over the line between the two pieces of foam board, but this is just overkill and really not needed. Apply your glue, and again I use Elmer's school glue, and then apply your felt. Okay, I always like to try something new with each box. This time I will not be using any T-pins on the side of the felt. I will simply put down my bead of glue and duct tape down the sides into position. In the end, I think once your glue dries, it does not matter which process you use. This way is just a little bit quicker though. Ensure you use a straight edge when cutting the felt. This allows you to apply pressure and keeps the felt in place without pulling on it too much. It would also be a good idea to have a new blade before you begin cutting. Now we will start on the part most everyone hates, but it is the stage that will actually make your box look the most professional. Yes, sanding. I always do my sanding in three stages. First, a rough 60 grit, then a medium 100, and to finish it off, a smooth fine 220. You get it. I sand the hell out of it. I don't need to bore you by making you watch me sand. Remember to wipe down your wood with a dry paper towel before you start staining. For this box, I will use classic oak stain. I think this stain brings out the best in oak wood. You can darken it, but I think if you do, you will detract from the red felt backdrop. Here is another first for me. I just finished making a movie prop from Harry Potter, and in the application of it, use some spray shellac. I think it looks great once dry, and it does give it some added protection to the wood. So instead of using polyurethane like I always do, I will try this with a shadow box. I'm sure the pros are rolling over in their graves right now. Okay, if you are a subscriber and you have watched me work with glass before, you are probably thinking, really, is he going to try this again? But this time, since I thought, come on, it's only two cuts, John, you can do it, I would give it a try. And yes, I have the backup plexiglass at the ready. So, take your bottom piece and measure out from the end of your glass groove from one end to end. Ensure you use the bottom of the groove and not the top, or your cut will be short. Now, just to be safe, I used the cardboard that was on the back of the packaging of the glass and cut it first. This way, I can check the fit and make corrections if I am a little off. You only get one shot at this, so your cut must be precise. 
Go ahead and check your fit with the entire box. Now that the width of your template is perfect, let's cut the length of the template. After your cardboard is in place, make a mark to cut the bottom of your cardboard template. After cutting, place your bottom piece of the shadow box back into position and ensure everything fits well. And now for the grand finale. Using your template, mark your glass with a grease pencil and continue with your cuts. Now I have received a lot of feedback on my glass cutting techniques and one common error I make is striking the glass more than once. So taking the advice and tips from my viewers, I strike the glass one time and then with a piece of duct tape, I tape along the line and make my break. Happy with my glass, let's install it and pray I don't break it in the process. You did notice that the sun came out and the day just got a lot brighter. <laughs> with the glass in place, you can now join the bottom of the box. Before you put your flag back in, take some Windex and clean the inside of the glass, then simply slide it into place. Now we are going to countersink the backboard screw holes so we can install it. I find a countersink bit that corresponds to the size of the screw heads and set the depth of the drill bit to be half of the length of the screw. I am going to set two countersinks in each corner of the back plate. It's funny how you see things later in the video. Here I almost drill my finger. To make the shadow box easy to mount by the owner, I install hanging brackets on the box. This will alleviate anyone else banging on the box once it is complete. Lay down a towel to absorb the vibration from the hammer and mark the center of the box. Now, eight inches from the center, place a mark in each direction. If you have ever framed a house before, you will know what 16 to center means. Having your marks exactly 16 inches apart will ensure that the owner can place the nails in the studs in the wall for greater support. Okay, now for the secrets of mounting the jacket. A lot of you know how to make a shadow box and are probably just skipping to this part anyway. Now, you can mount the whole jacket, but if you really want to know the secret to making it look professional, you're going to have to cut the jacket in half. Yes, that's right, cut it in half. Simply take a pair of scissors and cut the jacket down the center, fold over the excess, and tape it down. Here you get to see I was not joking about the colored duct tape. I'm now using my black tape. Since this is the first time I have ever mounted a jacket, I will use both T-pins and glue. So flip your jacket back over, put down some Elmer's glue on the back side, then place into position, and make sure everything is aligned properly. Now, under the sleeve and under the pockets, push in your T-pins to give your jacket greater support. One of the things I also did was clip off the bracket at the neck and removed it completely, but this was not shown. To mount the belt, I am going to do a couple of different things to prepare it. First, I will take a pair of pliers and bend back and forth the bracket on the back of the belt buckle until it snaps off. This will allow it to lay flush on the jacket. Then, taking the belt, I will cut it short so that I do not have to fold it over. It should not extend past your sleeve when your sleeve is in position. I took the belt and duct taped it to the back of the buckle, and where the belt was touching the buckle, I also used glue. To mount the belt and buckle to the jacket, I will simply glue into place and use T-pins under the sleeve. Apply your glue directly to the jacket, and then place your belt into position. The buckle is really heavy, so to assist in supporting it, I will cut a slit into the display board, place glue in the slit, and press the end of the buckle down into the groove. Once your glue dries, it turns clear, so this will not be an issue. If any glue squeezes out during the process of this, or you think you use too much, you can simply wipe it away with a paper towel. Place your remaining T-pins in place, and you're done with the jacket. The rest is easy. Lay out your interior in a design that looks appealing, and then for your patches you can either glue them down or use small bobby pins to set in place. 
As for the rest, you can push directly into the foam board or peel the glue strips and place them in position. For items that have a wide screw base, simply take a small Phillips screwdriver and place a hole in the board. This will keep the screw back from pulling on the felt when you install it. Then with a bead of glue, fill the hole and just push it into place. Most standard plaque backings come with reversible tape. Just peel and stick into position. Place your top back into position and screw into place. I would not recommend flipping the box over for this process because your metals are free hanging and they could actually scratch the glass. I leave them free hanging so they are always perfectly parallel with the bottom of the box once hung. Now all that is left is to present your box to the recipient. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe.